Alright, here's another video update of the 90 Thunderbird SC. It occurred to me that on the last video I didn't say anything about why I have this car. So this um, was a friend of mine who lives in North Carolina, Sean. He had called me probably a year and a half ago asking questions about a Thunderbird. And I thought that was odd because he's a Mustang guy. And so I told him whatever I knew. But long story short, he found this car. Um, friend of a friend. I think they were settling an estate. And it was in non-running condition. Stumbled real bad, like you saw in the last video. And I said, well, I wouldn't offer a lot of money for a non-running, stumbling Thunderbird. So he got it for a song and a dance. Spent a few months working on it, trying to troubleshoot it, and then gave up. And his buddy Bob took over, and they threw some money and time and parts at it, cleaned the fuel system, and then finally diagnosed it with head gaskets. So that was a common issue with these cars due to the restrictive exhaust and the fact that it's making 12 PSI stock. So over time, they just kind of let go and this is about the mileage that my car actually blew its head gasket somewhere around 70 or 80 thousand miles so after talking to him about options moving forward he said he just didn't have the time or the money or desire to mess with it so i scooped it up and uh, knowing what we have to do the first thing i started with was the exhaust um, because obviously you got to pull the exhaust manifolds and stuff and so we haven't done anything to the engine yet but the exhaust system is out of here and it didn't go too bad for 35 year old stuff you're not gonna be able to see much under the car but it's pretty clean no rust and uh, other than putting up a fight mostly because I decided to pull it out as one piece finally came out didn't break any tools here's what it looks like this is just a bone stock exhaust system so it looks like dual exhaust but it's not it has that single pipe that runs around the gas tank and the later models did not have as extreme of a bend right there it would have been uh, it would have jogged over but it would have gone like from here across so this is just super restrictive and especially when you have stuff like that you can see where it's crushed in I may actually work on that part of the exhaust to remove that uh, little restriction that choke point you can see stock catalytic converters just not really built for flow but other than maybe addressing that part of the exhaust, I plan on just putting the stock stuff back on. Started getting some parts. So I've got a few gaskets. Got some uh, solid rubber motor mounts because I just figured the stock ones were going to be trashed like most other ones. Valve spring compressor. Let me take the heads apart. And then just a bunch of gaskets. I wanted to be nice and actually get as many of these as I could and not use RTV everywhere. So, and of course, that's a nice wrench to have when you're taking the supercharger stuff apart. So, step one, I think the only goal tonight was to get the exhaust off. Now we can get out from under the car and start working up here on this cluttered mess. So next time it should look a little more like an engine once you get that blower out and um, you can actually see what's going on in there. But that's the update for now. Peace.